You are in continuation with the stability and control aspects. We will be now discussing about aircraft. By now you understand CM, CG versus Alpha or versus CL. They are not really different. It's a question of changing the scale here. So if this is my aim, I put it CL here, let's say, also, whatever we interpret. Basic question is, if I want the airplane by itself generate CM0 and it should itself generate the slope to the requisite manner, what is the amount I will let you know. Then let us first find out who are the contributors. Okay? Then we will talk about numbers. So I can write CM of the whole aircraft, CMCG, as CM0. One contribution comes from CM0. Another CM comes from angle of attack alpha. You see here, y equal to mx plus c, same. Who are the contributor to CM0? One I can write wing, one I can write tail. Okay. So we will talk about CM0 first. Then we will come to this slope. Let us see closely the wing. Let's say this is the CG of the whole airplane. Okay. This is the, in general, cambered aerofoil. And let's say far distance, there is a tail. Tail is always symmetric, remember this. Now here, if suppose tail was not there, if suppose tail was not there, to make this statically stable, you know the aerodynamic center should be behind CG. To make it statically stable, you know that the AC should be behind center of gravity, which is flying wing. But you know by now, I can make a cambered aerofoil based wing statically stable, but it cannot be trimmed at a positive angle of attack. Fair enough. Now, what is the problem? What is our aim? Our aim is, I want CM0 because of wing to be a positive value. Then only I will get this intercept, which is positive. But what is happening here, you see? CM0, let's say at alpha equal to 0, what will happen? At alpha equal to 0, there will be CL0. If you recall, CL versus alpha or a cambered aerofoil at alpha equal to 0, there is a lift. So CL0 will act like this. Also, because it is a cambered aerofoil, you know it will have M, or I write CM, AC, wing as negative, that I have explained in the earlier lecture. So if I now try to find out what is the CM0, contribution by wing, cambered wing, where AC is kept behind CG, this will be what? This will be CL0 into, let's see this distance is X, between the AC of the wing and CG of the plane. So X I am just making non-dimensional by dividing it by mean aerodynamic chord and this will be a negative moment. This will give a nose down moment. Similarly, it already has CM AC wing which is also less than zero. So see the problem. We wanted wing to contribute towards making some positive contribution so that the intercept is positive. But we have used a cambered aerofoil thinking it is lift wise, it is advantageous. And we put AC behind the CG, we thought it will be helping the static stability. It will help static stability, nobody doubts it. But what is the problem? Problem is we wanted that CM0 should become positive to have trim at positive alpha or CL. What is happening? This man is negative. This man is negative. So whole wing contribution towards CM0, instead of positive, it is becoming negative. So which a designer will not like. That means your wing is trying to contribute something like this here. 
It's a negative value. But our aim was it should contribute towards positive, at least 50%, 60%, 70%. So what is the problem? Problem is we have tried to use wing to give stability. But you know, in the beginning I have discussed at some point, the role of wing is not to give stability. Role of wing is to give lift. Role of stability is with the tail. Okay. So now let's say we are also looking towards the tail, that is tail wing combination. What I do, I still use this wing, and the tail is sitting somewhere here, and this is my cambered wing. What I do, I put AC of the wing ahead of CG of the airplane. Immediately you will react, oh man, this will become unstable. How does it matter? Remember, wing doesn't have any responsibility to give stability. That is tail. That's what tail will take care. We are only looking towards we are only looking after is there any way I can get some CM naught positive from the wing contribution. What has happened now? The moment I have put AC of the wing ahead of CG, check with alpha equal to 0, here, this is CL0, and I call as earlier, this is x, the distance. So now CM0 wing will be CL0 into x bar, which is x by c, plus CM AC wing, which is less than 0, negative. This is negative, but this is positive. Now you can see that if I put a wing having a camber aerofoil, and ensure that AC of the wing is ahead of CG, then this term will give positive CM0. Okay? And theoretically, I can go on changing X, that is, I can go on increasing this difference, and the value will become so large that it will not only negate this negative value, but it will come down to a value which is required to fly at this CL. But that will be too much. So what is done? If this is the CM not required, we try to get partly from the wing and partly from the tail. Okay. So what we have done here? Now we have changed this configuration. We are now become smarter. We said, okay, we will still use this cambered wing, but we will put AC of the wing ahead of CG of the airplane. This is very important. Okay. So some part of CM0 we'll get because of CL0 into X bar. And let us say we were aiming at full CM0. We have not got full CM0. We have got this much contribution from wing. The rest, I can take it from the tail. What I have to do in the tail? Instead of housing this tail like this, I will house the tail like having a negative setting angle. We call it IT, that is negative setting angle. Okay. What will happen if I set it negative like this at alpha equal to 0, this will generate a force here which will give a positive moment about CG. So this tail will also contribute towards CM0 tail also will contribute towards positive. So what is the message? If I want this CM0 for a given static margin or I don't say static margin, for a given CM0 for a given static stability, if I want to trim the airplane at a particular CL, I can generate that CM0 by putting AC of the wing ahead of CG of the airplane and giving some setting angle at the tail. So as a designer, I have to tweak this parameter and see that requisite CM0 I am getting. As simple as that. CM0 part is over. The next question comes, how do I get this slope? How much slope? 
is also a big question. How much static stability? Because we know if you make it very, very high in stability, then to maneuver it will be difficult. So let us address that question. If I try to see this graph, now please notice I am writing CM versus CL graph. Let's say this is a CL trim. You want to fly at this CL. One CM knot issue is understood. We realize CM knot I can make positive by putting AC of the wing ahead of CG and give some tail setting angle. Okay. Of course, we have taken a generic camber of foil wing. Next part is how much static stability. Before I answer that, let me see what is the meaning of this DCM by DCL. Or for, for us, I will try to interpret this. What is the slope of CM versus CL? Let us go back to a simple case. Suppose this is aerodynamic center and this is CG. Okay, so CL is this. CM will be about CG. So if I write CM, CM will be minus because nose down is negative. CL into X bar. X bar is the distance between AC and CG. So from here I try to interpret DCM by DCL. That will be minus x bar. What is minus x bar if I try to give a physical interpretation which will be useful for analyzing aircraft? That is my aim. We want to understand what is this x bar and try to give an interpretation which will be useful in analyzing static stability performance of an airplane. That is the purpose. And I repeat again, I am avoiding all those equations with that generally the part of our second course. But here, with whatever you have understood, we'll try to put our understanding in a synthesis form and try to see whether we can develop a feel for these numbers or not. Again, I take this example. Suppose this is the aerodynamic center. Okay? And let us say I have Initially, I have kept CG here at this point, CG. So it is statically stable, no issue. So if I plot CM versus alpha or CL, statically stable means the slope will be negative. And it's a, in general, aerofoil I have taken, so I have taken some CM naught. It could as well pass from here with symmetry. That's not the point. Point is on the slope. Now, if I move this CG towards this, towards right, let's say I have come down to a point here, I have kept the CG here, what will happen? The slope will reduce because now restoring moment has reduced. So when the CG just is below the AC, what happens? The slope becomes what? Slope becomes zero or it is this line becomes parallel to the x-axis. And this is the condition where we say the airplane or this configuration is neutrally stable. Because below this, it was statically stable. The moment CG goes behind AC, it will become unstable. The slope will become positive. Right? So this is the point or the CG location at which the DCM by DCL is zero we call it as a neutral point, okay? So that CG location at which DCM by DCL is zero, we say that CG location is called neutral point. So for a designer, he always finds out the neutral point because neutral point depends upon the configuration. 
how is the size of the wing, what is the aspect ratio, what is the temper ratio, what is the aerofoil use. So he ensures if he wants to design a wing, wing alone airplane, and you want to make statically stable, he will ensure that AC is behind that CG or CG is never crossing the neutral point because for this case AC and neutral point are same. But suppose same configuration, I take same configuration, now I put a tail, let us say this is AC. Now again I do same exercise. I put XCG or CG here. You know that now there are two lifting surfaces. Okay? Both under any disturbance alpha, both will give initial restoring tendencies about CG. Let us say CG some, somewhere here. I further take it. I now put the CG just below the AC of the wing. This is AC of the wing. Do you think it will become neutrally stable? See, suppose CG is just below the AC of the wing and if there is an alpha disturbance here, there will be lift because of wing. And since CG and AC are at same point, it will not give any restoring moment. However, this tail is here, it will give storing moment. So it will not become neutrally stable, still the slope will be negative. That is still for a positive alpha, there will be negative CM. You take it further somewhere here, XCG, then any alpha disturbance if you give, now the lift on the wing will give destabilizing moment and lift from the tail will give stabilizing moment. That is lift on the tail will try to discourage this angle of attack increase. However, lift on the wing will try to encourage it. So it will have initial tendency to come back to equilibrium. Here it will not have initial tendency to come back to equilibrium because now CG is here and AC is here. So theoretically you can find a point, some point you could find where this moment will neutralize, right? And that point where DCM by DCL will become zero, that is, even if there is angle of attack disturbance, whatever disturbing moment wing is giving, that is equally compensated by the restoring moment given by the tail, and the net moment on the tail is zero, so it is neutrally stable. And that point for the aircraft is called neutral point. Is it clear? For a wing alone configuration, having an aerofoil, neutral point is the aerodynamic center. That is, if, if I keep CG just coinciding with aerodynamic center, that is the neutral point. To make the aircraft statically stable, I must ensure that neutral point is always behind center of gravity. Okay? Now, for whole airplane, I definitely want it should be statically stable. But there are no dictum on wing to generate initial restoring moment to make it statically stable because that is not his dictum. That responsibility is with the tail. Okay? So I can say I can always align some of the CG of the airplane. I can always align the AC of the wing ahead of CG if it gives me some other benefit. We have seen if I put AC of the wing in front of CG, especially for camber aerofoil, this helps in giving positive CM naught. However, this will have destabilizing contribution, but we say we'll appropriately design tail size and we'll locate it at a particular length to see that overall this aircraft becomes stable. That is. The neutral point comes somewhere here. It is simple like there is one force here. Now another force is there, so resultant has come. Now you can loosely think the center of pressure has come here. All the 11, 12 students, right? Now the question is, once I write neutral point here, or in a very restricted, casual manner, you can say 
neutral point is the aerodynamic center of the airplane. This is a dangerous statement. Aerodynamic center is defined only for aerofoil. Okay. But to make one-to-one -one understanding at this stage, I can say the neutral point is the aerodynamic center of the whole airplane, like neutral point for a wing with an aerofoil was the aerodynamic center. Okay. And this is the CG. So this distance, that is, if I measure from here, XNP, the distance of neutral point, minus XCG, distance of center of gravity, which are non-dimensionalized with chord. This is called stability margin. Why I came to all this? Because I want to give a physical interpretation to this. Cm is equal to minus Cl into x. So as if all the forces, whatever acting here, I am thinking it is being represented at neutral point, which was for aerofoil, it was aerodynamic center. And this distance from here to this Cg is x. So Cm was minus Cl into x. DCM made DCL is minus X, which is nothing but, now I understand, minus SM. SM is the static margin, which is the distance between the neutral point and the CG. If I understand this, my job is simpler. So if I now draw CM, CG versus CL, I know this slope is nothing but DCM by DCL, which is minus static margin. That is the distance between neutral point and the CG. So that is the margin. If the CG goes and coincide with neutral point, this value will become zero. It will be neutrally stable. Generally, for designing airplane, let me correct this. This should be straight line. Okay, don't get mixed up. Right. So now my life is simple. Once I understand. DCM by DCL is minus static margin. So if I plot CM, CG, and CL, this slope is minus static margin. A static margin is the distance between neutral point and the CG. Generally, when you design a transport airplane, you keep static margin anywhere between 8% to 15% of chord. So when I say static margin is minus, when I say DCM by DCL is minus 0.1, or DCM by DCL, the slope of the CM versus CL is minus 0.1, what I actually mean is static margin is 10% of chord, which is mean aerodynamic chord, or the separation between CG and the neutral point is 10% of the chord. So if you are asked to design an airplane, let us say, you want to design an airplane. How will you start? How will you make the beginning? Question is this. First you will ask, what sort of airplane it is? Somebody say, okay, it's a simple transport airplane. So you will start like this. The designer will first see what is the weight of the airplane. We will note down, this is the weight. We will note down from the history of data for similar type of aircraft, what is the cruise speed? What is the cruise altitude? If I know this, then I get a rough assessment of what is the CL required. Let's say CL is 0.3. Anyway, for all practical purpose, at the optimal altitude, you try to use the drag bucket, where operate within CL 0 0.3, 0 0.4 for normal case, 0 0.2 to 0 0.4. So we know this is the CL, or let's say 0.3, I'm going to design the airplane. Accordingly, I've got enough cruise speed at a given altitude. Since it is a transport airplane, I know what is the static margin I will be keeping as an initial estimate. I keep, let's say, 15 percent. So I know DCM by DCL is minus 0 0.15. So I draw a slope of that and extend it and see what is the CM naught, CM naught of the aircraft required. Once I know the CM not required, then I try to distribute some part to wing, some
thumper to tail through tail setting angle. That is, I will try to put AC of the wing little ahead of CG. From there, I will get some positive CM naught. I will give some tail setting to the tail, horizontal tail, to get some positive CM naught and ensure that these two, when gets added, I get this is the value. So, this understanding at least tells you, gives you a guideline how do I locate the wing in a fuselage? Where do I put the AC of the wing? Where do I put CG of the airplane? So these are few tips which will help you in getting aligned to actual process of design. This gives you initial feel. Okay. If somebody asks you how do I get the wing area, how do I decide wing area? Natural question comes, what is this wing area required for? It is for lift equal to weight. So you know half rho v square s cl equal to weight. So you can easily calculate s how much s is required depending upon what speed you are flying, what altitude you are flying, what is your cl design and what is the weight you are going to cruise with. So once you get s, you then try to lay out the wing, what should be the aspect ratio that is B by C, suppose rectangular wing. So you'll distribute this S appropriately, making a rectangular wing initially, and try to see the aspect ratio depending upon it is a glider configuration or a normal airplane. If it's a normal airplane between six to eight, you try to keep the aspect ratio and find out what is the span, what is the chord. Like this, iteration will go on. So in my next lecture, when I'll be starting something on the design, initial preliminaries, this understanding will help. Okay? Thank you.